Good morning, folks. It's actually not morning for me. It's just about sunset on Friday night. With my wife and my puppies, there's the soon-to-be super moon. We're at our little favorite vacation spot in the woods. Let's get to the news. Drought look. As you can see, the shift west in the dry zone from last year. Colorado not enjoying it one bit. Fires got even more out of control yesterday and there are now mandatory evacuations. They have the opposite concern here. Note the thin rivers have swelled from a month ago. This is India after that hellacious monsoon. About a thousand dead and that number could rise. We were right about Japan's storm breaking apart, but this one has strengthened. Expected to be a pain this weekend as it makes landfall. Lows in northern Europe are driving counterclockwise and bringing major heat to the southeastern countries and a chance for dangerous thunderstorms and tornadoes. If you live in America Central or just on the periphery, you are definitely not in a drought. West of the coastline have two separate tropical cells vying for power. Meanwhile, the convergence shifts eastward. As the lows do that themselves, you can see where that energy is headed over the United States. Folks, it's time to correct the mistake. Yesterday I claimed the CME from this M2 solar flare would miss Earth. In truth, I still don't see updated SOHO images, so we'll take NASA's word for it that the CME might give us a glancing blow. You remember how these endless spirals work from my video, How to Watch the Sun? Remember, NASA makes these for us after the CMEs. They don't actually stream data or anything. It's just their best guess. Bartol shows muon counts a bit higher than normal. But the blue rising just above that is the arriving story, Corona Hole Stream. Speed ramping over 700 kilometers per second with a slight drop in the density. Looking days ago at the sun reveals the leading edge of the Corona Hole was facing Earth, so this is right on time. Got the three-day solar wind here on Soho showing the density spike from two days ago when we said to expect the speedy particles on the way. KP index only showing minor instability in Earth's magnetics, but this same Corona Hole particle flux is starting yet again almost at a radiation storm of protons. Got sunspots all over the disk, but not much flaring. I'm going close up on some of the established regions to show that there is just not a lot of magnetic mixing. Blue and red umbras, very well divided. Complex surface plagues don't count either. 1775 in decay, major disappointment there. Coming to the M2 flare maker, she's gone quiet since facing Earth and She's towing in yet another region on her same latitude. Helio viewer temporarily glitching this morning, but a still image works to convey the size of this filament on the northeastern limb. She is turning towards Earth now. As you know, the quake watch is almost over, with the top coronal hole spinning out, the south one facing today, and the supermoon tomorrow. After the sharp uptick to start the watch, I will actually break this into two watches so that that first one on the equator can still be a success, but these bigger ones north and south can fail. That'd be a strong statement for the trans-equatorial coronal hole factor. It's not like quaking was absolutely quiet, just didn't hit the six magnitude rubric. The Greece quake was normal, but not Albania and the Italian rumbling. Guam had two five-pointers in a few hours, and the world gets many seven-pointers in between Hawaii's four-pointers, so that's a rare one. I'd still be more than happy to call these polar coronal holes a failed watch if it means no injuries or damage. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.55 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.